Hello and welcome back to the Codred Legacy channel. In today's video, we're going to explore how to load or open files in Takeinter. So whenever you have a proper GUI application, like imagine you have a financial reporting application where you can create financial reports for every year, you often have a load system, like you can load a report into your application. You're not gonna manually enter that data in every single time, right? Whenever you open that application, you're gonna have some kind of load system, obviously. So that's what we're gonna do in today's video, but obviously on a much smaller scale. Here's this data.txt file of mine, and we have a bunch of names and emails separated by commas, okay? We have four of these records. So we're basically gonna imagine that we have this user management system where we're storing user data, and we want to load that data into our application and display it. So that's going to be the goal of today's video. So let's begin. I'm going to connect first a function to our button, our button called load file. Okay. It's going to be called load data. And let's define that function here. Load data. Okay. And what are we going to do here? Well, this is the submodule file dialog in Takeinter that's used to load, uh, sorry, create these dialogs. It has a bunch of different dialogs that can be used for opening or saving files. All right, so we'll do file, file path is equal to file dialog dot ask open file name. Okay, then over here, oh, and by the way, open file names can be used to open multiple files. Okay, instead of returning one file path, it'll return uh, multiple file paths, depending on how many you picked. Okay, I'll show you that in a minute. All right, so we're gonna do ask open file name. We just want to open one file. Then we're going to just do this actually. All right, now um, we could just run it like this actually, and I will do that. Okay, I'm just gonna print, print out the file path and show you what happens right now. Then we'll customize this a bit later. Okay, I'm gonna click on load file. Then, or here's my data.txt file. I'll click open. And over here is the file path of our data.txt file. Okay. So that's what this function does, basically. It doesn't actually load the file. The loading logic is something you need to do yourself. Okay. Takeinter is not going to do that for you. But before we uh, display this data, um, which will only, only take a minute, I want to show you some other customizations, okay? So one important thing is that when you have a lot of files, like look over here. Right now, this is a folder where I have my Python files and the data file. But whenever you use open dialogs like this, loading dialogs, what you want to do ideally is filter out the number of, sorry, the type of files that show, okay? Basically, you limit the extensions okay if you're only loading txt files we can customize this dialog in such a way that only the txt files show what we're going to do is create a list and within this list we're going to create tuples okay and in these tuples there's going to be a label okay and then there's going to be an extension okay this is how it's done basically we call it anything text files for example then over here we specify the extension dot txt and there's an asterisk over here uh, which basically means that they can be an arbitrary number of characters before this okay so something like abc dot txt or something like that okay and this is basically a rejects pattern okay so i'm gonna duplicate this uh, and just make one more setting called all files and you can have as many of these as you want by the way okay but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to create one called all files, just in case the user wants to see other files. And now I know that this is, this is a bit confusing. Let me show you what this does. Okay, you'll understand it very soon. Okay, so, uh, oh wait, I didn't pass this in. Okay. All right, now I'm going to run this, click on this, and here's our dialog. And now we have this new option over here. And by default, the first type that you declare, which in our case is text files, that one is the default uh, extension. So you can see text files over here. And all of the .py files are not visible anymore, okay? Because we're filtering, basically. 
and we can switch here to all files just in case we want to see everything. Okay, we could also have created a filter for .py files, but that's not what we're here to do. So we'll stick to text files. Okay, now let's proceed a bit further. One interesting setting is initial there, which basically controls where the uh, where the pop-up appears. Because I'm not sure if you noticed, but this pop-up right now, it shows up in the same folder as our file. This is our file. All right, initial there can be used to change that to like C drive, for example. See, now we're in C drive. And it's a, typically the default behavior for it to show up in the same folder as your Python file, but you can also explicitly specify this by writing dot over here. Okay. Uh, anyways, uh, and sometimes on Windows, uh, this can also not happen. Like if you select the file in some other place uh, other than the root directory, chances are that Windows will remember where you opened it. So next time you open it, it's going to open up in that lo other location. So initial there can make sure that you always show up in the same location as your Python file. Okay, but yeah, we don't really need to use it right now. Okay, uh, other than this, we can just specify a title. Okay, load data. All right, and now load data is going to be the title over here. See, top left, top left corner. Okay, and yeah, that's about it really. Okay, so... What we're gonna do now is just load the data, okay? Otherwise, we're pretty much done with the main part, but let me just show you real quick how we can load the data, okay? Because right now, this just gave us the file path, right? Whoops. Okay, so what we'll do is open the open function, file path, pass that in the first parameter, mode is equal to read, okay? We're gonna read the data, and it gets returned over here, basically. Then we do file.read, uh, and this is basically CSV data, right? So let's just print this data out first. Let me just see what it looks like. And then we'll parse it. Okay, this is what it looks like. <clears throat> All right. Now what we're going to do is iterate over this. For for user in data, okay, what we're going to do is... What should we do about this? What is the best way? Well... This is going to give us each line, right? And then all we need to do is basically split that line, actually. And confirm this. All right, this prints out every character. Not exactly what I was expecting. Read lines. All right, now hopefully this should do what I was thinking. Okay. Ah, yes, perfect. There we go. Cool. And now I think there's an extra new line character in there. Well, actually, no. The reason why it's appearing with lines in between, because there's a new line character over here. Like, there's a new line character actually at the end of these lines. And there's also a new line character automatically printed out by the print function. So that's why it's like that. If we disable that, if we disable the new line character by the print function, you'll notice that it appears normally. So, so don't be freaked out okay and just because we're doing this tutorial i may as well mention that there is a way i think to remove those okay it's on the right correct using our strip we can actually remove that new line character if i if memory serves me correct yes we can okay cool yeah all right, uh, so that's that's also another way of doing it, just in case you want to remove that character for some reason, which, you know what, Let, let's just go ahead and keep it that way. Okay, now what I'm going to do is create a label where I display this data into our window, okay? I'm going to do this, text is equal to, sorry, parent, okay, parent first. Then over here we'll do user. Okay. Then we'll pack this in. Okay. And there we go. See, it's now displayed. Now I'm just going to stop the video right here. There's no need to really go into the details. I've already kind of explained uh, how this is all working. 
this is also a pretty interesting concept over here that I'm using of basically dynamically generating widgets during the runtime of your application uh, using data, all right? You can obviously split this data, then put them into separate labels, make a whole grid layout. That's totally up to you, okay? But I think we get the point here. The point has been conveyed, how to read data, how to open files, all right? If you guys are interested in seeing a different video on how to save files, because uh, right now we discussed how to open them, right? If you want to see a video on how to save them, then you can check out uh, my other video. I'll leave a link to it in the description below, all right? See you guys in the next video.